Hi guys, it's Ola. I've had a few requests for a basic Photoshop drawing tutorial and I'm not the expert, but I'll try my best. I think it's not a bad idea. Let's do it. So this is the Photoshop desktop edition on Windows. It might look a little different on Macs and the various apps, but the principles should be the same. We go File, New, and we create a new file and we can set the width and height in pixels. Now I have a lot of people asking about resolution. Ignore the resolution. The resolution is only something that's relevant if you're printing or dealing with screen sizes. It has to do with how many dots per inch you're stuffing. We don't care how many dots per inch, we just care how many dots. So the minimum maker is a height of 600 pixels, but it's good to always work with a bigger file because you can always scale down but not the reverse. So I'm going to go, and it's, for Maker right now, it's easier to go with a tall file, or what we call portrait mode. See, like here, but they show the little guy. So we'll set the height to maybe twice our max, the width to 800. 800 pixels wide, 1200 pixels tall. You can even do twice that if you want. I'm just going to keep it simple for now. So we have a tall file. And we want our layers window to be open and history is, is useful as well. So where that we toggle that is window and layers. If you don't see your layers tab, this is where you turn it on. Also history is useful. What else do I have? Color properties. I don't use paths. Whoop. Who rearranged my windows? What has happened here? Character. This is only for writing. I wonder if it updated or something. Anyway, oh, and of course the, the main sort of tools are here. Well, I, I stick them on the left because that's where I'm used to them. Okay, uh, so we have one layer and it's white and it's called background, that's the default. Um, if you ever see this little lock here, I just undo it because it locks the layer and it limits what you can do and I don't even know fully what it does, that's why I just turn it off. So if we're going to draw something, especially for Maker, we always want a new layer. So we go down here to the little paper icon, create a new layer, layer one, <clears throat> excuse me. And if you want, you can use folders, make a new folder, pull your layer into the folder. And that way you can sort of keep this, like maybe we're going to make this a cat. And first we're going to make a sketch. So I double click my layers to rename them. And I'm going to take the paintbrush and you can change paintbrush properties. We're just going to stick with a basic shape. You can change how soft it is around, but I want full hardness and the size. You kind of see though, that's a little dot. Oh, that's a massive dot. You kind of have to gauge this relative to the size of your screen there. Okay. I'm going to start with nine. Opacity and flow are important. Um, Opacity is sort of how dark your line will be. This is 100% opacity. If we make it 50, it will be half as light, half transparent, basically. And so you can so you can layer it on. So that some of these <clears throat> playing with some of these options makes for a more natural experience that mimics real drawing more. Um, for now, I'm going to make a sketch. So I'm just going to go with yeah, 50 and flow. We'll go with like 25. Oh, sorry. Flow is um, how many dots you're putting out at once. If you go really low, it kind of looks the same as opacity because it gets lighter and lighter. It, it's slightly different. Um, but for now, we'll just do something like that. Now, I have a drawing tablet, which I recommend. If you don't, you can still follow along. You just use your mouse. Um, but I'm going to switch to my drawing tablet now. And if you have a drawing tablet plugged in, you can toggle here. Always use pressure for size. This is definitely something you want to use if you're using your tablet. Okay. So step one, and you can absolutely use a reference for this. Do not sketch. I mean, trace, do not copy and paste the image here and don't trace it because one, it usually is somewhat illegal. And two, it's just not good practice for drawing. You want to learn how to draw things more from scratch. So I'm not looking at a reference for this tutorial, but I could have a window beside this one. So first you draw your sketch. So I'm going to, you know, so with a sketch, you're making out your rough shapes, you know, and then you could kind of draw in the features and you're just kind of making a mess, drawing all over itself, everything over itself, making a cat, 
<clears throat> do, do, do. Okay. Okay. And then make a new layer. And the sketch layer, we can change the opacity here in the layers, make it more transparent. The one that's gonna hide. And on this layer, we will make a more <clears throat> clean line. So for this, maybe I'll go for full opacity. And almost full flow and I just make I mean you could take as many turns for this as you like you can make sketches fine-tune your sketch make many layers of a sketch but I'm just gonna go straight in and finalize my lines I'll just pause for a second okay <clears throat> so here is my cat now I am going to make the tail on a separate layer because I'm thinking ahead making a game for maker I'm going to put a new layer below my cat layer and draw the tail there yeah okay and I'm closing it now this is a trick I use for coloring so <clears throat> we're gonna delete the sketch and you know what we're gonna make a new folder for the tail tail <clears throat> And I'm going to go on the tail layer. I closed my line, so now I can use the selection tool, magic wand tool. And I want contiguous to be checked off. That means I only want to select pixels that are touching each other, not pixels of the same type all over the image. And I click outside of the tail. And this selects this whole blank space, but it stops at the line. And now I'm going to go select inverse. So instead of everything beside the tail, I've selected the tail. But the line is slightly outside the line. Now if I use this to make a fill, it will kind of show up a little. So now I go select, modify, contract. And we're going to shrink the selection two pixels. Let's try that. Perfect. So you see now the selection has shrunken in. It's right in the middle of my line. That's what you want to make your fill. So now I'm going to make, maybe I'll name this outline. Make a new layer. Put it right below, make sure it's still in the tail folder call this my fill yeah and we can make a you know classic orange cat cool and now we have a cat with an orange tail so we can take this put it into a folder and call this you know tail one and then make additional tails that are mix and matchable later but for now I think the next thing people probably want to know is how to do some shading. So I'll go into my cat layer. I will also make a fill here. So same thing, select the outside, <clears throat> select inverse, select, modify, contract, two. Sweet. Now I have a fill on my cat. Okay, so now I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm going to hold down the Alt key, A-L-T, and hover in between these two layers and this arrow shows up. If I click this, this creates a mask. So this new layer, layer one, will only show up, what I draw in here will only show up where there's already orange. So this is a great way to make shading. So I'll go in here, get a color. For shade, you wanna, for shading, you wanna go darker and then it's a little less saturated. And then sometimes you might wanna go closer to blue. So in this case, up goes yellower red goes sort of redder if neither is obviously more blue then just go less saturated okay now I want a totally different brush now I want a bigger brush I want zero hardness well there's different of course there's a hundred endless ways to do this but generally I like something for shading like 25 opacity and 6% flow and this will kind of give us an effect more like we're brushing it gently with a sponge rather than drawing with a pencil right and so for me i have a tablet i have pressure sensitivity on the harder i press the bigger my brush gets and then i just go in and because it's a 25 percent opacity it basically takes like four or five uh runs in the same area for it to go to full darkness like to fully be saturated with the color which is good for shading if you want to kind of take it easy and don't want to go too crazy 
Now you can do different types of shading. You can go full hardness and that just gives you a more, maybe more flow. This will give you a more, oh, sorry. I'm like, why isn't the tail coloring? See, this gives a more kind of um, raw look and you got to play around, right? The, the kind of brushes you use basically determine what your style is going to be. So you have to find the mix that's right for you that you like the look of. Dun, dun, dun. A little shading on the muzzle, something like that. We do the same thing for the tail. And now I have my eyes here, but for Maker, it would make more sense to move my eyes to a separate layer in case I want to give the cat different types of eyes. So I'm going to select that where I drew the eyes on the outline layer. Control copy to copy them. Delete key to delete them. Then I'm going to go make a new folder with a new layer and Control Shift V. Control V paste and Control Shift V paste in the exact same position. And now I have the eyes on their own separate layer and their own separate folder. We'll call this eyes. And they're going to be fixed because no matter what, you're going to want some eyes on the cat. We're not making a horror game here. And now we can do the exact same thing for the fill here. Do, 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 select inverse, select modify contract. And we can make some green eyes. Oops, on the separate layer. And now you can go in and make cool effects. So you can go new layer, hold down Alt key. Just name this so it's obvious. Fill outline shading. So for eyes, you want to go and make a darker blue or color. We're going to go back to a full opacity here. Ooh, still way too big. Okay. Usually on the eyes, you have something like a shade on, across the top. And then we can make a new layer on top of the outline layer in white. Um, this is where you change the color down here. You have a foreground and background color. And you can toggle them back and forth. Or you can press here to get just black and white. And then, boop, I want white. And then you want usually some sort of shine, maybe in multiple spots. Make sure the shine is the same on both eyes to match. You can also do other cool stuff like take your eye color. I don't know why I always open and close this twice. And take a warmer color this time, not a blue color, but a more yellow color. And draw some highlights. And so for example, if we want to make a color picker out of this, we've got our eyes here. We're going to put select, hold down shift, select a layer, hold down shift, select the bottom layer to select all of them, then press the folder. It'll automatically stuff them all into a folder. And this can be, let's say this is going to be eye set one, one. And it's going to be a color picker. And then we take again, same thing, go inside, select all layers, and call this what's this green called? 689, whatever. Hashtag our color code. <clears throat> and then now we have the folder select, and we go Control J to make a new folder. And now we can go in here and Make a new layer here that's still masked by the eye layer. And we can make blue eyes. And then the shading can double click, color overlay, and then we can select a blue, a more purplish blue. You can see the eye shade, although that's why I went too purple. Not dark enough there. Something like that. And the highlight, we can also change this way color and this we want something nice and bright and warmer yeah and now we have a new eye color copy the hex code and then when you're done this last step is control e to flatten them and yeah that's the basic process you just keep repeating it for every item that you need